Welcome to the Smarter Science of Slim, the scientifically proven program where you eat more and exercise less to burn fat and boost health. Eat smarter, exercise smarter, live better. I am so ready for that. Hello everyone, this is Carrie Brown welcoming you to The Sane Show and with me I have Jonathan Baylor. What is up, Carrie, and wonderful viewers, listeners, and readers? Yes, readers. We have questions. Continuing from, questions. Continuing questions. So the, the question was posed over on the Facebook community. If you had a chance to sit with Jonathan, what would you ask him? So all of these questions, that was, that was the question that was posed to them, and... Here are some of the questions that came up. Jim Story says, I'd ask Jonathan about the evolution of his own thoughts concerning exercise duration and frequency towards less and less. We know studies are starting to confirm this, but it's still a fairly radical concept to the conventional exercise crowd. Jim, first of all, you are the man because you have been around for many years. And I think it's awesome that you are in the Facebook community. So thank you so much for sticking with us. Probably since I mean, Jim, Jim's been, Jim is, Jim is a sane, a senior sane member of the community. So what is up, Jim? The duration frequency, for me personally, this might go on a little bit long, so I'll try to make it quick. Uh, as you know, I used to be very, very into, let's call it bodybuilding, but not technically, because I always wanted to be a little bit more cut up rather than just gigantic. And so I used to train in high school. I am not exaggerating. I would train 21 times a week. We had weightlifting class. We would, we would, because I played uh, pretty intense sports, we would lift before school. We had a weightlifting class and then we would lift again after school. I, we'd literally lift. I'm not kidding you. Like today we're doing right bicep. Like that's how neurotic we were about exercise frequency. This also ties back to a previous podcast where we talked about means versus ends goals. So at that time, my mindset was the point that the, my, my goal, which this is wrong, was to go to the gym. I was like, my goal is to exercise. Go to the gym. The point is to go to the gym. The point is to exercise. We now know, uh, we, everyone here in the same community knows that exercise is a means to an end. The end is the hormonal, neurological, and gastrointestinal change that enables us to be slim, happy, and healthy for our entire lives. Exercise is just a technique we can use to, to cause those changes to happen. So once you're able to make that mental shift, meaning that the point of exercise is not in our world to exercise, the point of exercise is to trigger a response by your body then you just start to say, well, what is it that causes the most significant response to happen in the body? Well, the research is incredibly clear that the hormonal response of exercise is directly related to the intensity of exercise, aka the number of muscles, uh, muscle fibers that are recruited. And we also know unambiguously that there is an inverse relationship between the intensity of exercise and the frequency and duration that you can do it. So for example, doing going for a walk, you can walk for many hours every day of the week, no problem. Low intensity means high duration and frequency. Low intensity also means low hormonal impact on the body. On the other end of the spectrum is eccentric exercise. There is no question in the research community that eccentric exercise is the most potent stimulus for muscle fibers available. In fact, in certain circles where, for example, frequent training is fun, like CrossFit, people who do CrossFit do it because they really, really like it and they want to do a lot of it. So they want to have high duration and high frequency. They want to work out for a long time and work out frequently. They would actively never do eccentrics. In fact, they might do an explosive lift and then just drop the weight simply because they don't want to work their muscle fibers as intensely because if they did, they wouldn't be able to do their frequent CrossFit workouts. 
So what are my own thoughts? So personally, I, I had a, a period in time in my life where I had to eliminate everything I could. This is the period of time where I was working at Microsoft full-time and also doing all this research and writing, and it was just like, look, I, I cannot go to the gym any more than once per week. And because of that, I said, look, I, I'm reducing my duration, I'm reducing my frequency, so I have to increase my intensity. And fortunately, that worked out really well. Uh, now, if an individual has more time to go to the gym, that might change. If they like going to the gym, that might change. It's really about, again, what are you after? Is what you're after the most results in the least amount of time? If so, then we've, we, you know, we've got an app for that. If your goal is to spend a lot of time with your friends doing physical activity, then we've got an app for that too. I hate to sound like a broken record, but the science is, is, is quite clear, but how you apply it to maximize your happiness and your results is going to be dependent on your circumstances and your goals. Carrie, what do you think? I think everything you just said was true. Woohoo! <laughs> and and also Jim, you mentioned in your question which is a great phrasing. You said, I'm quoting, a fairly radical concept to the conventional exercise crowd. The other thing to keep in mind about the conventional exercise crowd, often people who would consider themselves part of the conventional exercise crowd are people that like exercising, right? So if your job is to be a personal trainer, you likely enjoy being in a gym and you likely enjoy exercising. So the conventional exercise crowd that really likes exercise and there are some monetary incentives for people to exercise more frequently, you can remember we're all biased, right? No human is completely unbiased. So research that sort of furthers doing a lot of exercise, doing frequent exercise, taking a lot of supplements after exercise, doing complicated exercise, inventing new machines and gizmos and gadgets that can help you do more exercise. Uh, there's just more to spend your time and money on there. So if someone is interested in this, there's a lot more to explore there than than saying, and, and it's not new, right? People like um, you know, the classic bodybuilding worlds, these high-intensity trainers, Arthur Murray, pe people like that back in the 50s and 40s were talking about doing single workouts per week, extremely high-intensity, resting more. But what for, for the people who are interested, then Joe Weider came out. Joe Weider was much more of a savvy business person. He said there's no money to be made on people exercising infrequently and very simply, so they added some things to it. Not to say that everything Joe Weider said is wrong, but again, take a step back, look where the money is, look where the time is, and that may help to uh, scope why conventional wisdom is what it is. Right, now we have a question, and I'm going to apologize in advance for butchering your name, and I feel very badly about this because this lady has been around a long time too, and she's regularly on Twitter and Facebook, and she makes a lot of very um, valuable contributions to the community. And she's awesome. And she's awesome. <laughs> but her name is, I'm going to say, Tiles It Dow. I know I've got the last name right, but I, I, sorry for the first name. Anyway, she wants to know how the sane lifestyle can be combined or reconciled with D.H. Kiefer's work, Carb Backloading and Carb Night, because she's a big fan of um, D.H. Kiefer's work too. She said he was on Jonathan's podcast last year, but they only talked about re resistance training and cardio. I am a big fan of D.H. Kiefer as well. Big fan. I think he's a, a great guy. In terms of my personal understanding of his program, it is uh, embarrassingly low. So my apologies, Kiefer. I know we've had a lot of great conversations. Um, the thing that I would imagine Kiefer would agree with is that, uh, again, uh, sane eating is just about maximizing Essential things, minimizing non-essential things. I believe what Kiefer's work looks into, and this is very common in the bodybuilding and athlete, uh, elite athletic performance communities, is using 
uh, traditionally insane foods, like certain starches, like sweet potatoes, for example, oats, and certain sugars, like fruit juices, to turbocharge athletic performance, uh, glycogen levels, and like a bunch of really advanced stuff. What I'll say is using traditionally insane food in a very precise, um, almost like uh, under a physician's uh, guidance type of thing, it, it, it absolutely, I mean, there's no question that that approach works, that this intermediate carb loading and yada, yada, yada. When I say works, it works for the people who are willing to do that 100% correct and are in a position in their lives where they need to do that. AKA, if you are trying to be just the freaking ripped or just the best person at your CrossFit gym ever, or you're, you're not about just being healthy and achieving nutritional serenity, but you're about, I want to see my six pack abs and this is fun for me. It's my hobby. And I want to just do this all in, then uh, absolutely. If you want to be a competitive bodybuilder, you're going to absolutely do the types of things that involve carb backloading and other techniques like that for the audience here where we're trying to, our goal is very much more around ending the obesity and diabetes epidemics. A, a shortage of carb backloading is, is not really relevant to that community. So uh, Kiefer's work is great. Uh, he's all about nutrient density. He's all about nutritional quality. And I bet that his program is already sane and just takes it to a level for, uh, I mean, I think actually Kiefer's brand is like dangerously hardcore or something like, not that it's dangerous, but his branding is literally dangerously hardcore. Like he is hardcore. We are more mainstream. So if you want to go hardcore, I bet Kiefer's work is like hardcore sanity, uh, just based on my personal interaction with him. And he's a great dude, so uh, hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> and I have nothing to say because <laughs> I don't know D.H. Kiefer, but now I kind of want to get to because I feel stupid. <laughs> well, let me, I think Kiefer, and oh my God, I'm so sorry, man, if I, I'm getting this wrong, but Kiefer is a physicist who just got super interested in this stuff and then read thousands and thousands of studies and applied his physicist hat to it. And it's just, I think it's cool when scientists do that. Uh, obviously, I, it's similar to my story as well. So uh, good dude and his results speak for itself. He does uh, uh, some great work. So I would recommend checking his stuff out. All right. Now we have another non-question. And this one comes from Elvira Berzina, who says... I don't have any outstanding questions. However, I just wanted to say a massive thanks to Jonathan for all the hard work and effort he has put in over the years. Is it Elvira? Elvira? Elvira. Elvira. This is why Carrie reads the questions. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, it's absolutely my pleasure. And please know that we're really just getting started. Uh, see the, the Calorie Myth book as the cornerstone on which hopefully we will build a, a wonderful, sane city and we will continue to make this better and, and easier and more implementable over the coming years. So thank you so much. And next we have a couple of questions from Cody Espadella. Although running is not required, I would ask about eating sanely and what portion sizes should they be for someone who enjoys running, and I mean a lot of running, and he would also ask how to eat sanely when there is not a lot of time to cook and weekends are spent with family, not food planning. I'm trying to raise my four-year-old daughter with a healthy outlook on life, not an obsessive view of having to prep food instead of playing jump rope. <laughs> Cody, definitely hop on to the internet right now and type in the art and science I think, of low-carbohydrate performance. So I believe this is uh, Volek and Finney, two amazing researchers who are doing really great research around using fat, uh, dietary fat, as also bo bodily fat, or body fat, excuse me, as the primary energy source for high, high endurance activities, which really makes a lot of sense when you think about it, because we can store ballpark 2,000 calories of sugar 
in our muscle tissue. So this is why people, probably yourself, carry those little gel pack, little glucose packs and such. And it's always about like fueling. You, you have to drink these drinks and consistently take in sugar because your body doesn't store sugar, your body stores fat. So what their research looks into is if we could make our body more fat adapted or make our body better at burning fat for fuel, you can store a heck of a lot more energy on your body as body fat as we all know. So you can easily store hundreds of thousands of calories on your body as fat. So wouldn't it be amazing if you could fuel your body during life or doing, during ultra endurance training from fat rather than from sugar. Wouldn't that unlock uh, untapped realms of human performance when it comes to endurance? And the research is suggesting yes. So please check out their work because not only then can you achieve your endurance athletic goals, but you can also avoid the uh, gastrointestinal and diabetes-inducing challenges that can come from consuming a lot of sugar to fuel yourself. And then the second question, so when there's not a lot of time to cook on weekends and not on food planning, I would highly recommend, and I know Carrie has some things to add here, is try to cook in bulk. We've covered this in a lot of other shows, but I, I find that the number one cause of time spent on food is let's call it a la carte meals. Like what's for dinner tonight? What are we going to eat today? I don't know. Crap. We need to go to the store. We need to buy the ingredients for this recipe. Rather than if you take the, let's call it cook by numbers approach, where it's like pre-prep a lot of non-starchy vegetables, cut them up, wash them, have them in Tupperware containers, get some uh, protein ready, whether they're salmon patties or just fish, chicken, meat, beef, whatever, have it ready, and then have your nuts and seeds on hand, and then just maybe add some different spices and add some different sauces. That sort of assemble by numbers approach is what I personally do, and I know a lot of other folks have had success with. I don't know, Carrie, what would you think for this one? So I, I assume, Cody, that if you haven't cooked before, now you're eating sanely, that meant that you were eating a lot of pre-prepared packet food. Because if you if you go sane, but you're used to cooking, you're not going to have to cook any more cooking sanely than, than insanely. The only difference would be if you, if you think you have to cook now, whereas before you were eating packaged food that you slung in the microwave, then yes, there would be a difference. However, I think... Um, what Jonathan says is very true. There's a lot of things that you can cook in bulk. You can make, for example, my soups are a great example. You can make, you know, uh, uh, 12 batches of soup just as easy as you can. One, make it, portion it out, put it in the freezer, and then you've got, you know, 12 meals ready right there. Just reach in, defrost it, heat it up, and you're ready to go. So, yes, you will need to spend, you know, an hour or two prepping that, but it will make, it'll give you a lot of time back over the long term not doing that. The other thing is the simplest things to do, and particularly, um, I'm not sure if you're in the States or not, but seriously, one of the simplest ways to eat sane is to roll out the barbecue, get yourself some lean protein, grill it up, and, and add some, some sautéed vegetables or some seamed vegetables or a huge old salad and you're good to go. And that doesn't take very long at all. And I think that would be a very good lesson for your daughter. Fresh, quality food, quickly prepared. I mean, I think that would be a great life lesson for her. And I'll give you a very concrete uh, personal example, Cody. So I am traveling next week and my dear wife Angela is a tax manager CPA in downtown Seattle and we're recording this podcast on April 6th. So you can imagine that she is just 100% focused on her upcoming tax deadline. So during her busy season, I cook all, everything. I do all of the cooking for both of us. And since I'm going to be out of town for a week, I usually do most of my cooking on weekends but I'm not going to be here the next weekend. So literally what I, this is literally what I did. And of course the comp compromise here is that, that my wife will be eating the same thing every day, but she likes it. So it's fine is I literally got a bunch of salmon, bunch of it, cooked it all. So this is literally two weeks worth of salmon. 
Uh, I then I then got greens uh, like collards, Swiss chard, kale, sautéed them up, uh, put them on top of uh, the salmon. And then interestingly enough, my wife really likes coconut, just raw coconut uh, sprinkled on top. So we have, I literally have a freezer full of Tupperware containers that on the base level is salmon topped with greens, topped with coconut. So you can see it's like super sanity, right? You've got an optimal nutrient-dense protein. You've got a nutrient-dense non-starchy vegetable. You've got a wonderful whole food fat. There are literally... 14 of those just lined up in the freezer and she just takes them out 48 hours before she's going to eat them. They're like frozen dinners and uh, you know, she's set for the next two weeks. So I, I, I think making your own frozen dinners in bulk is also a really fun, well, fun might not be the right word, but another approach. Yeah, I think I, I really do think that the making in bulk and freezing or, or making in bulk, things like you know, our, our Kirkland turkey burgers that we love, you know, just sling 10 in a pan, pop them in the oven. 15 minutes later, you've got the protein for, you know, depending on how many people in your family, you know, two, three, four, five, or in my case, 10 meals right there. And it actually took me no time at all. And just add salad, add steamed vegetables, and you're good. If, you know, you have to balance it, the time you have versus the amount you enjoy cooking and and the kinds of foods you enjoy eating. Some people would go completely insane if they had grilled chicken and salad every day. They would go nuts. So for them, obviously, is more value to spend more time cooking some different things. Like there's loads of recipes over on my blog. But for you, obviously, if, if the time is more important, then just keep it really, really simple or make up a whole bunch of soups or recipes that you can freeze and then literally use as a freezer dinner. I love it. Well, Cody and everyone else, so what we got? We got Cody, we got Elvira, we got, how do you, <laughs> this, oh my God, I'm so sorry, Talizia Dow, awesome. Thank you, sorry for butchering your name. And Jim, thank you so much for your wonderful questions and, and for all the other lovely listeners and viewers and readers out there. Uh, feel free to pop over to Facebook and post your questions. But before doing so, please ask Google, meaning type in calorie myth or type in smarter science of slim or type in sane, and then type in your question. For example, if you were wondering how to get vegan or good sources of protein for breakfast, you would type in smarter science of slim and breakfast protein. And chances are Google would answer your question for you because of all the amazing Q&A our lovely readers and listeners have done over the years. And we will be back next week with more awesome reader, viewer, and listener Q&A. So until then, remember to eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. We'll chat with you soon. See ya. Wait, wait, don't stop listening yet. You can get fabulous free same recipes over at carrybrown.com. And don't forget your 100% free eating and exercise quick start program, as well as free fun daily tips delivered right into your inbox at baylorgroup.com. That's B-A-I-L-O-R group.com.